every large technology that's that has changed society has usually started in the hands of experts and large companies such as software development or game development or manufacturing but then somebody comes along and democratizes it and makes it accessible to everyday people and suddenly you see this technology become a way to be creative we want to do the same thing with hardware with electronics so a little bit is a library of modular electronics each module is a, essentially a brick that has one function, light, sound, sensors, motors, and they snap together with magnets, so you cannot put them the wrong way. And as you snap them, you can start from a small circuit and build something very, very complex. So you don't have to be a programmer or an engineer, you really build it up like you build up Lego, and you end up with something that would have taken months or years uh, and hundreds of thousands of dollars to make. I went to MIT to the Media Lab for my uh, graduate studies and that's where I was really inspired to use technology for creative purposes. Uh, so I was doing research on how to put electronics in the hands of artists and designers. The problem was that designers, um, when they're making consumer products, uh, typically don't have access to electronics as a material. And so they're sketching and inventing and prototyping um, and, and only late in the process do they hand it off to engineers to make the technology work. And so Little Bits uh, in its early days was intended for designers to be able to integrate into their prototyping process so that they could use uh, foam and ca cardboard and wood and light uh, or sensors and batteries uh, and also, you know, concrete, uh, that you should be able to combine it in the same way so that you can invent uh, more meaningful products. The MoMA acquisition was definitely one of the high points uh, of my journey with LittleBit. It was in fact the day before we uh, announced starting the company and for me it was such an important um, step because it meant that um, uh, the world and the industry and the design world were starting to really understand uh, the value of electronics as a material. We have 47 different bits uh, that you're able to use right now um, and we have another hundred that are on the way uh, and so five and ten years from now the hope is that people will start to create their own bits as well and this library becomes this ever-growing platform that everybody has access to so that any idea that you come up with you can sketch and you can prototype and you can invent with electronics. Everybody should be able to use and create with electronics uh, no matter what their background is, and then I think it's going to play a very big role in um, innovative products coming from unexpected places. There's nothing that's going to stop the maker movement. I mean, it's in full swing. Um, you have people that are making things with craft materials, with electronics, with robotics, uh, people that are uh, 3D printing food, people, people that are uh, 3D printing DNA. There's just all these things that are happening, and there's no way to stop it. And it's, in fact, a, I believe, a really positive thing for society because we're flipping this dynamic of people operating like consumers and large companies just creating product for them. Um, it's a very exciting future, uh, and if you're not in it, you're going to be uh, overrun very quickly. So I suggest to people that they jump on board.